All right, the first step is to download and install Android Studio. Visit developer.android.com slash studio. And download the Android Studio version that's right for you. Once it's installed, go ahead and run it. You'll get this window right here. From here, go to Configure and SDK Manager. The SDK Manager pops up. I would recommend downloading a few different SDKs. Android's a little bit tricky sometimes when it comes to differences in SDKs. Try to go with a newer API version, but you don't necessarily need the newest, latest, and greatest. Personally, I'm using Android 8 through 5.1 for testing. Next, go ahead and start a new Android project. Just leave the defaults. And you don't really need to change the SDK, but you can if you'd like. Doesn't really matter what sort of activity you choose, just hit next and finish. We'll take a few seconds for Android Studio to open. Once Android Studio opens up, click on this little icon right here. It's the AVD Manager or Android Virtual Device Manager. It looks like the little Android guy with a phone behind it. It's right on the toolbar. From here, you'll see virtual devices, or if this is your first installation, you will not see any. Go ahead and click Create Virtual Device and create a new phone. I'm using Nexus 5X, but you can use anything you'd like. Go ahead and click Next and configure it with whatever SDK you'd like and click Next again. Give it a name and click Finish. Once your diverse device is in there, you can go ahead and run it by clicking this little green arrow here. The virtual device itself will stir it up and just make sure it boots all the way before continuing on. This may take a moment as these virtual devices tend to be a little bit slower than an actual phone. All right, the phone's fully booted up and we're ready to work. Next, we need to install the IntelliJ IDE. Go ahead and download the community version. You can visit jetbrains.com slash idea slash download and download the version that's right for you for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Once again, this is free and open source and shouldn't cost you a dime. Once the download's complete, go ahead and run it and you'll see the IntelliJ screen. Go ahead and click configure and go to settings. You're going to want to go to plugins. If it's not listed, just type the word plugins right here in the search box. From here, type in Flutter. I already have it installed. You should see a little button right here to install it. Go ahead and click install and it'll go through the installation process and then it will want to restart the IDE. Finally, we need to actually install Flutter. Visit flutter.io, click on getting started and choose the operating system you're on. I'm on Linux, but all the steps are pretty much the same. Follow the directions and run the command line. When you're done, go ahead and open up command line and type Flutter Doctor. Flutter Doctor is an awesome feature that lets you know exactly what's going on with your Flutter installation. As you can see, I'm pretty much good to go. I've got Flutter, I've got the Android toolchain, I've got Android Studio, and I've got IntelliJ Community Edition installed but I have no connected devices. Don't worry about that. That'll be available once you start an Android virtual device, which you can do right in the IDE. All right, by now you should have Android Studio installed, IntelliJ installed, Flutter installed, and you should have run Flutter Doctor. If there are any major issues in Flutter Doctor, be sure to correct them. Don't worry about this connected devices. It's not important at this point. Go ahead and open IntelliJ, click create new project, and you'll see Flutter listed on the left. If you don't, you didn't install the plugin correctly. On my system, I was able to follow the steps that I described. On some systems, you may need to go back and reinstall the Flutter plugin after installing Flutter. Go ahead and choose the SDK location. If you can't find it, click Install SDK and follow the directions. Click Next. 
From here, you see we have a project name, and we can choose which languages the binaries get compiled down to. Hit finish, and we're just going to build a basic Flutter application. This part can take a second depending on your computer speed. All right. First thing we're going to do for the sake of time is start our emulator. You see how it says no devices? That's what Flutter Doctor was complaining about. Let's go ahead and open the emulator. It's going to take a moment for this to boot up, so I'm going to just pause the video for a second. All right, our virtual device is booted up and ready to go. We're just simply going to click the run button and you'll see it's going to start building, compiling and pushing the application out to the phone. While it's doing that, I'm going to cover what this application does. Here we're importing the material package. Think of the material as just like a desk in front of you. It's just a flat surface which you can move things around and work with. Then we have our main function, which calls run app. Run is the main entry point. Run app is just a function that takes this class, in this case the my app, and pushes it out. Now, Dart has what's called stateless and stateful. You can see these two here. Stateless means it doesn't track the state. State is, well, what's going on currently. For example, let's say you're married and you come home at three in the morning. Your wife says, hey, where were you? And you say, hey, none of your business where I was. Your wife's state is going to change. Yes, state is simply what's going on in the application. So what's going on here is we're making a new application, which is stateless, which is making a new instance of the my homepage class, which is stateful which means it's currently tracking the state. And here we see the my homepage state, which actually has a counter inside of it. Then internally, we're building the graphic user interface through this build function right here. Let's go ahead and look at the program. And as you can see, here it is in all its glory. We're gonna click this and you can see the state is changing. Let's look at this a little bit. Let's say I don't like that. As you can see, when I saved it, it initialized what's called a hot reload and the emulator updated in real time as well. You'll see these changes in real time on the screen. That's called hot reloading. It means you don't have to start and stop your application every time you make a change. You can simply save it and it hot reloads. If you make a change and the hot reload doesn't take place, you can just simply restart the whole application. And because the program's out there, it restarts very quickly. All right, we're gonna make a live template. So let's go into Flutter. And we're just gonna make a new project. The purpose of a live template is actually pretty simple. While a Flutter application is quite simple, as you can see, there's a lot of typing to it. And we want to simplify this for the sake of learning. So let's move this down and let's just control all and delete. And we're going to make a simple Flutter program. We're going to say import and we're going to type material and we want the Flutter material package. Once again, Material is like the material of your desk. It's just a flat surface you can move things around on. Now we need to view, do a few things here. Say void main. And we need to make a few classes. And we want to extend a stateful widget. Now we want to make the state of that widget. So we'll say class. This little bit gets a little confusing here. So we want to kind of explain this a little bit. This is the basic flow of a Flutter application. You have a main and in the main, we need to actually do the run app. So we're going to say run app. And you notice how it wants a widget called app. Well, we need to make a new material app. What a material app is, is an application that uses a material. It's a very vague concept, I have to admit, but that's how they've designed this. So think you have a material in front of you, such as a desk. 
on that material, you can move things around. A material app is an application that runs on that desk. We want to set the home equals new, and we want to make my app. So what we're really doing here is we're saying run app, we want a new material app. So we get all the material goodness, buttons, icons, you name it. And we want to set the home screen. In this case, it's my app, this class here. Now, the my app class extends a stateful widget. Now, we've talked a little bit about state. State is just simply remembering what's going on. Think of it like you're driving a car, you turn the turn signal on, that turn signal is going to click at a very interval, click, click, click. As it does, that's the state, whether it's clicking or not clicking. We need to override something here. We're gonna say override. We want to create state. And we're going to create a new instance of the state class. So what is going on here? Okay. We have our application. It extends a stateful widget, meaning it's going to remember its state. But the stateful widget itself is not actually the state. Think of that. Think of the ramifications of that. You are a person. You are wearing clothes. At least I hope you are while you're watching this video. Those clothes are your state. You can change your clothes at any time you want, thus changing your state. You are not your state. The state is not you. So think of the My App as you as a person and the state being the clothes that you're wearing. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting here. We want to override the build function. And we need to say widget, and here we go. Widget, build, build context, and then to do, implement a build. Let's just get rid of that to do because we're going to do that right now. What is build context? This is the context of which this method is being run. Whether it's in startup, shutdown, refresh, etc., etc., it doesn't matter. It's the current context, and that's what we need. Now, there's a fair bit of typing here. If you don't feel like typing all this out, by all means, don't. I'm going to post the code out in GitHub. There'll be a link associated with this video. You can just simply watch me type, follow along, and then copy and paste the code as needed. All right, so we're going to return a new scaffold. Now, a scaffold is a structure on which you're going to build your material application. Think of it like a scaffold on the side of a building. There's different levels to this. The first level is called app bar. And we're going to make a new app bar in here. We have a title, and the title, we want to make a new text. And if all of this is very confusing, don't worry. We're going to cover all this in future tutorials. Right now, we're just building a template. So the first level on our scaffold is app bar. In the app bar, we're making a new app bar and then filling in the widgets. Notice how the title is this widget. We're saying new text. We're not just saying dot, dot, and then hello, we're actually saying make a new widget and put it in there, meaning we can put any type of control we want in there. Now, if at any time you want to know what you can do, hit control and space, and you'll get a list of things that are appropriate for whatever control you're currently in. So we want to select the body, and we want a new container. Once again, control space, and you can see a list of things first thing I want to do is I want to actually set the padding and we're going to say new edge inset all and I'm just going to set this 32.0 which is a double control space again and you see how there's a child get very familiar with child because it's a repeating pattern it's a design pattern so the child of this is going to be a new center that may be a new concept for you you're like wait what center is actually an object that's correct you're making a new center. You're not just saying center this. Then in the center, we are also going to make a child. That child is going to be a new column. Now you notice how column has children, meaning it can have multiple. And it's just a list of widgets. A widget is pretty much anything that you want. It's kind of the generic placeholder for an object. 
in here, we're going to say new text. Hello world. Let's go up and pull up our emulator. And you can see we have nothing running yet. Let's go ahead and run this. Just to make sure there's no bugs in the code. It's going to take just a moment for it to build and push it out to the device. And once it's finally up there, we'll have hot reloading enabled and all the other goodness. As you can see, this is the basic structure of a Flutter application. We have our scaffold, or actually our material app in place. This blue area is the app bar. The body is here. We have this hello world. There are other parts of the scaffold that we'll cover in future tutorials, but right now, just focus on this. Control A, Control C to copy, and then we're just going to simply go into settings. Look for something called a live template. Be sure to select Flutter and click this little green plus icon. You want to make a new live template. Call this whatever you want. In my case, I call it tutorial. Give it a description and paste the code in there. To show you what this looks like, here's what I'm using. So it just says tutorial, Flutter tutorial. It has the code already in there and shorten FQ names on the default tab. Just hit OK or apply, and you're good to go. What this does is when you make a new application, you can just delete everything out and type the word tutorial and hit enter, and all the code will be there right at your starting point.